Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, Wrestling Challenge Review Series for the 24th of January 1987. We are fast approaching WrestleMania 3. Uh, if you're new around here, we get over 1,300 audios on a variety of both old school and new school uh, wrestling shows. Some interviews, I want to get back to those coming in the summer months once the independents are back up and running, maybe in the fall. But uh, anyway... Uh, Al Navarro is opening an enhancement talent match here on this particular episode. And uh, he is facing off against the Junkyard Dog. Junkyard Dog, a guy who, by 1987, beginning to slow down, certainly retired by 1993 or so. But uh, certainly he's been around for almost uh, 10 years by this point, And uh, it's showing on his body without a doubt. Uh, Navarro tries a couple of shots. The Junkyard Dog uh, is in there with a third member of the wrestling team squad, and that is Danny Davis, the heel referee. Davis up in his face over everything he does. Hit, the dog gets a couple of headbutts. He's unhappy with uh, what happens in the contest. Dog eventually hits the uh, thump power slam and gets a victory in the process of all of that. Uh, Adrian Adonis talks about how the WWF magazine in the um, update section, rebuttal section, would be better if he was uh, featured in it. Uh, we move forward into Jerry Allen facing off against um, an opponent of the day, which for him happens to be uh, Siva Afi. Siva Afi, or and actually, Siva Afi is his tag team partner. My apologies, uh, as he, they face off against Demolition. This is the original Demolition and managed by Johnny Valiant. Odd that uh, the uh, axe is played by Randy Culley, uh, in that, or is not played by Randy Culley, was originally going to be. Uh, or actually, and so Demolition, obviously, Culley and uh, Edie were the original run the smash character uh begins soon thereafter actually i think they uh did end up having a uh, bit of a battle there but basically demolition's debut here uh lots of punching lots of kicking as one would uh, imagine if you've never seen demolition before think of guys in uh, bondage level gear and leather and face paint and uh, all sorts of things um some body slams some really basic maneuvers and the Demolition Decapitator gives them a, fi a finish here. A uh, little bit more punishment taken in the first uh, match, at least on challenge, than expected uh, by Demolition. Match goes a little longer than I would have expected, but at the same time, want to make sure they get over with the crowd. Uh, the tease by uh, the team of the U.S. Express potentially going heel. They're, they say they're happy with the edge that uh, Dan Spivey has coming back off his injury and that they're glad that 1986 uh, is done. Uh, the kind of tease being a little edgier, uh, there is uh, an announcement or the continuation of hype for WrestleMania 3, which at the time and for several years, probably close to 20 years, is the biggest uh, WrestleMania event in all of pro wrestling. Uh, Jack Foley, a.k.a. Cactus Jack, a.k.a. Mick Foley, up next, and he gets uh, laid out by Kamala relatively quickly with a couple of chops and, and splashes. Of course, Kamala comes out with the Grand Wizard, otherwise known as Curtis Iakea, and the uh, top rope splash for Foley. They cannot control Kamala. They are getting him ready for a run with Hogan uh, throughout the spring the late winter, early spring, uh, hitting all the major clubs, Boston and New York and all of that. So uh, then we go to interview process here. Uh, Hillbilly Jim talks about uh, having overcome his leg injury in 1985, talking about having a good year in 1986, talking about being the voice of the people, which is kind of goofy, but it is what it is. They go back, and Mick Foley is still uh, being loaded onto an old-school, fold-up, military-style stretcher gurney uh, sort of situation. Uh, Hercules manages to um, punch, kick, and press slam and pull Nelson his way to victory. Challenges anyone to come out and challenge him about it. Uh, 
he lays out, in fact, Billy Jack Haynes, which sets up their match because uh, Hercules was supposed to put the full Nelson on him but jumps him with a clothesline instead. Obviously, Hercules and Billy Jack Haynes probably in the top four matches, I would assume, for WrestleMania uh, uh, three at the time, obviously behind Piper and Adonis and uh, Savage and Steamboat and Hogan and uh, and uh, Andre. But Barry O and David Vance are uh, enhancement talents. Uh, Barry O complains about not being announced properly. Uh, the Killer Bees are the main talent in this match. Basic match, super basic, you know, arm drags, arm bars, and the like. Bees using the the mask gimmick, mask confusion. I actually would have thought they could have sold Killer Bee masks at the time. I never saw them in the merchandise thing, but uh, Danny Davis, in an inside interview, complaining about being uh, manhandled and disrespected by the Junkyard Dog, among others. Obviously, they've been building that uh, storyline for quite a while. It is um, D. Brian Blair that is wearing the mask. It is Jim Brunzel that is not, at least during the early stages of the match. Double um, drop kicks and the like by the Killer Bees. Bees are constantly in motion and also trying to be uh, at their best run. Uh, slingshots attempted by the Killer Bees, and the Bees get the victory. Jack Tunney brings out the celebration of Andre the Giant being undefeated for 15 years. The size of the trophy, and this is done on Piper's Pit, the size of the trophy is, dis uh, the discrepancy is, is uh, noticeable, very noticeable. Uh, the fanfare is also. Uh, then we go to a vignette with the Honky Tonk Man who says he is not impressed with a small plane. He wants to be a champion in the WWF and wants to be treated like he already is one, basically. And Jimmy Hart is uh, cheering him on with these uh, perhaps irrealistic expectations. Anyway, uh, we go to another enhancement match, which is, or actually not an enhancement. This is the uh, Rougeau brothers and Orton and and uh, Mor or, or uh, one of the Rougeau brothers against uh, Don Morocco. I believe we have uh, Jacques Rougeau against. Uh, uh, Don Morocco in there, and uh, obviously Bob Orton on the outside. Basically, this is a singles match to kind of set up a uh, tag series, probably around the horn for uh, house shows and the like, probably the maybe B Town or something like that. Anyway, uh, match is pretty basic. Morocco obviously having the power advantage, um, and uh, The, the other individual, um, Rougeau, having the speed advantage. Brawling ma majority by Morocco. Backdrop along the way. Mr. Fuji out there with uh, his man along with uh, Bob Orton Jr. So, obviously, there is a great deal of uh, cheating to be had. T Fuji takes shots with the uh, cane uh, on the Rougeaus on the outside. And that is obviously not boded well. Uh, the wonder that is uh, Morocco sends him back in. I wonder if there might not have been a Morocco and uh, Orton match with maybe the uh, the Rougeau brothers planned and it, it gets switched before WrestleMania. Anyway, Fuji gets Atomic dropped on the outside of the ring, which Fuji, of course, is former tag team champion, so obviously he wrestled this way before. This um, iteration of the crowd, uh, that's kind of a, a big deal. Anyway, um, match is relatively unfinished, and we see the return of Ricky Dragon Steamboat uh, since his injury. Uh, he's facing off against Tiger Chung Lee. Steamboat back, and they wonder about his uh, uh, longevity. There are a couple of spots where he does manage to uh, show pain in his throat when um, Chung Lee goes after it. The Steamboat, though, does do the around, the all the way up and around, among other spots. Steamboat with a cross body, and uh, although he looks like he might have lost a step or two and does sell the throat upon occasion, Steamboat back in mainly, let's say, 80-85% top form for this time period. Uh, the arm ringers and the like, uh, Steamboat um, has Chung Lee escape him 
but the top rope splash eventually, or top rope crossbody eventually does give him the victory there. Um, and there is anger from the Macho Man about the return of Ricky Steamboat, uh, and the also the attempt to put George the Animal Steel out with the steel bell on the outside of the ring. Uh, at, on Saturday night's main event, Savage says he was going to finish him once and for all, and still intends to do that to both Steamboat and uh, George Steele. So certainly aggression there. We will be back with more right after this.